Located in the middle of the Hudson River, you'll find Polypel Island and the many dark secrets it's said to hold. You see, the island contains the ruins of the abandoned Bannerman Castle, a place that has seen death and horror, but the island itself also has a sinister history that left many people refusing to go anywhere near the cursed land. Hey there, dissectors. Today we're going to delve into the dark and often alarming history of the Bannerman Castle, an abandoned location which has ties to many ghosts, including the famous ghost ship itself, the Flying Dutchman, made popular over recent years by the franchise Pirates of the Caribbean. The island is said to have gotten its name from a local legend. The story goes that a young girl named Polly Pell fell into the icy waters of the river and upon being rescued, found herself on the island's shore. Polly and her rescuer fell deeply in love and were married on the island, thereby giving the island her name. It is thought that the legend came from Dutch sailors who often visited the island, using it as a safe place to hide from the attacks of local indigenous people who were known to fear the place. They believed that dark spirits haunted there. Since the 1700s, the island has been owned by only five people, and one of those was Francis Bannerman, better known as Frank. He was born in Scotland in 1851, but moved to Brooklyn, New York, when he was a young boy. While his father sold goods at Navy auctions to make money, Frank collected and sold any scrap metal he could find from the local harbour. Frank was a natural businessman, and before long he started his own company, selling various collected goods. As the Civil War ended, Frank purchased army surplus and even travelled around the world, gaining more supplies for reselling. He gained so many items that the New York City officials requested him to store his supplies outside of the city. So when his son David was canoeing down the Hudson River one day, he came across the small island and suggested it to be the perfect place to store all the goods Bannerman had acquired. In fact, you can still see a sign on one of the castle's walls that clearly states Bannerman's Island Arsenal. Around 1901, Bannerman started to build his castle and he wanted it in the style of an old Scottish fortress. While the castle was being built, you would also have large amounts of munitions being shipped there until they could be sold on. The strange thing is though, Bannerman considered himself anti-war. He even wrote in one of his catalogues that he hoped the weapons he carried could be housed within the castle one day as part of an exhibit on old weapons. In 1918, Frank Bannerman died aged 67, leaving the castle unfinished and it seems fate would keep it that way. You see, in 1920, there was an explosion of gunpowder and shells that damaged many buildings on the island. Not only did it blow a wall clear over to the mainland, three people were injured and it caused $50,000 worth of damage. Whereas locals thought it had been brought about by dark spirits, officials reported that one of the castle's flagpoles had been struck by lightning, causing the shocking damage. This was the beginning of the end for Bannerman Castle. Now a strange fun fact though, is that Mrs. Bannerman had been at their summer house on the island, relaxing outside in a hammock just before the explosion happened. She said she suddenly had the overwhelming feeling she should go inside and get some iced tea. As soon as she moved out of the hammock, the explosion occurred and a huge chunk of concrete came flying through the air, landing where she'd only moments ago been sitting. During a treacherous storm on the Hudson River in 1950, a cargo ship crashed onto the island, exploding on impact. This caused more damage to the castle, and not long after this, the nail was firmly hammered into the coffin of the Bannerman business. You see, a new government ruling came about regarding army surplus sales, followed by the only local ferry that connected the island to the mainland sinking, cutting off all contact. In 1962, just five years before the island was sold to the state, Frank Bannerman's grandson, Charles, wrote, No one can tell what associations and incidents will involve the island in the future. Time, the elements, and maybe even the goblins of the island will take their toll on some of the turrets and towers, and perhaps eventually the castle itself, but the little island will always have its place in history and in legend and will be forever a jewel in its Hudson Highland setting. But in 1969, when the island was owned by the state, a suspicious fire broke out that burned for three days. The fire destroyed ceilings and floors, leaving only the walls behind. 
But as the years have stretched on and neglect has infected the castle like a disease, even the walls are collapsing on this historic place. How much more can this property take until it crumbles away, leaving behind just memories? The island has seen many paranormal entities over the years who decided to call the place home. The now ruined drawbridge has borne witness to the spirit of a horse that can be heard neighing at the night sky as well as walking across the now destroyed pathway. There is also a strange whistling heard all over the island from an unknown source. Who is the trickster that whistles the melody? Nobody knows. Shockingly, many also report hearing the generator starting up, but it hasn't worked in years. So is it an echo of the past or just people's vivid imaginations? What do you think? If you visit the island, you may also hear a bell ringing in the distance twice. Now this is thought to be the spirit of a tugboat captain named Crawford. The field Bannerman wronged him. You see, Bannerman used to sink old boats and tugboats as a way of creating a breakwater to protect the island. Apparently, Crawford asked Bannerman not to sink his vessel in front of him, possibly due to memories he'd had on the tugboat. Anyway, Bannerman ignored his pleas and sank it as Crawford watched on in horror. He is said to have cursed Bannerman, stating he'd not heard the last of him and would even haunt him. The sound of a bell ringing twice is said to be a nautical sign for reverse. And while talking about ships and other vessels, let's discuss the legend that echoes around the island of the Flying Dutchman. This ship was said to have sunk just south of Polypel Island after succumbing to a vicious storm. The legend states that the captain and crew are cursed to sail the Hudson River for eternity, with many people even stating they've heard the crew's pitiful cries for help during storms. It is thought that once a ship has passed Pullapel Island, they've earned the right of passage for a safe journey down the Hudson, but it doesn't stop there. Come on now, you know me. You see, the island, as I mentioned earlier, became famous with sailors who feared they would be attacked by goblins. Washington Irving wrote a story about a tribe of goblins that terrified the Dutch and lived on Polypel Island. He described how the goblins could bring about gusty winds and dangerous waters of the highlands. Working on the Hudson River back then sounds terrifying, especially with tales of ghosts, evil spirits, goblins, and ghost ships. The crazy thing is that once upon a time, boat captains are said to have cast off any new sailors on their inaugural voyages down the river as an initiation. Now this sounds absolutely terrifying, especially as the sailors were often drunk when being forced to disembark. The poor sailors would then be collected on the return trip with the hopes that they could now handle pretty much anything. For years, Polypel Island was considered too dangerous for visitors. Not that it stopped people from trespassing in the hopes of seeing something paranormal. The thing is, it's not just the spirits you have to be concerned about, but the poison ivy and snakes which infest the grounds. In 1992, Neil Kaplan founded the Bannerman Castle Trust, which has raised money to stabilise the crumbling castle and deal with the landscape of the island. Now it is open in certain months once again to the public, where the Trust hosts horror movie nights, kayak tours and other fabulous events. Nowadays, the castle is more like a museum, which is exactly what Frank Bannerman would have liked to feel. And with the history still clearly visible for all to see, the horrors of the past may have paved the way for a more informative and safe future for Bannerman Castle and the island it calls home. I hope you find this episode as interesting as I did. What do you think about the castle's dark history? Do you believe that evil spirits haunt the land? Or that the waters are cursed with spirits of dead sailors? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. As always, my friends, until next time, stay safe out there.